Welcome back everyone. We have a dried bird here to, do, to work with. I'm going to show you a couple of different uh, ideas that you can um, soften up your freezer burned hawk or any kind of bird that's been sitting in the freezer for too long. This hawk has been sitting in the freezer for four years. I believe more than four years, not because we didn't want to mount it. It was because the owner hadn't figured out what he wants to do with it. So, but doesn't matter. Now we're going to focus on rehydration. We start with some uh, exercise, slowly bend the uh, wings and legs in different direction so it softens up. The muscles will soften up now. And then all we have to do is create some warm water with uh, dish soap. Mix it, mix it pretty good kind of like a, you know it doesn't have to be a heavy solution just warm water and uh, some soap like a teaspoon soap in a, in, a, in a cup of warm water maybe um, so with an insulin syringe that has a very fine and tiny needle we are going to start injecting all the toes from the tip of um, basically from the tip of the toes like all the way to to uh, to the heel everywhere that you see on the bird that is dried out you can easily inject it so we're going to start with feet because they're the most uh, vulnerable part of the bird in the freezer and they get dried out fastest so if you notice what I'm doing I'm trying to um, inject the soapy water into every toe while I'm pressing down the uh, the toe at the same time so because you can easily over inflate them with water so we don't want to do that I'm just trying to do slow because once the toes are dried out you don't know where your injection is gonna lead to so you better um, do it carefully now this is my trick to fill up my insulin syringe yeah I usually like to apply uh, the injection from one direction on every toe and basically try to uh, move it around here and there and make sure that uh, the injection is going everywhere. It's important to do it before you start skinning the bird because uh, the time you're spending on skinning the bird will be used uh, for the for the solution to basically soak up everywhere uh, in the feet and uh, make it soft and pliable. I've been able to in some cases I've been able to soften up birds that I thought I would never be able to soften them up but if you just take your time and inject it properly even if it gets a little bit of a juice or that solution inside in 10 minutes or something like that you will be noticed that you will be noticing that the feet are a little bit softer and you can keep injecting it more and more and more some people like to soak them, like drop the whole skin after it's been skinned out with all the dried out feet and whatnot. Some people like to just drop them in the solution and soak them. It, it will work too, but I've had better luck with this system. So you're soaking them from inside. That, uh, that injection, that solution gets locked and trapped inside underneath this skin. So basically you're, warm, uh, you're softening them out from inside out. So you, you, you're hoping, when you soak them, you're hoping that, that the, the skin will basically allow a lot of juice or water or soapy water gets inside of it to, to soften it up. But this way we are putting it inside, so it works a lot faster. I've had much better luck this way. And um, instead of just soaking them in the solution, because how long do you do we want to soak them? Uh, it might it might never penetrate into the cells of the feet. So this way, at least you have them inside already, and uh, it's going to um, basically soften it up much much faster. 
Now, one of the problems with uh, freezer burn birds are the wings. And um, usually the primaries, which are attached to the last part of the wing bones, they group up together. And as you can see, they don't separate properly because it's been dried out. And uh, don't be shy, just keep injecting every little piece. It's very hard, especially when it comes to wings, because the tip of the wing doesn't have a lot of meat. Um, it's very hard to inject it properly or thoroughly so it, um, it softens it up quickly. Because usually you can't tell where you're injecting. I mean, with time and practice, you will be a lot better and injecting the right area but again um, the wing structure is somehow that a lot of your injection as you can see might just seep out of the skin and it might never stay inside to keep it soft so uh, just keep injecting until you hit the spots that you need to to make the um, injection work properly for getting them softer and whatnot like I mean I keep injecting and I keep testing as much as as soon as I see that the uh, wing feathers like especially the primers are moving in groups instead of separately you can tell exactly like how a fresh bird moves uh, like on their wing you can tell and you see the kink here in the flying web that's dried it's not supposed to kink it's supposed to stretch and retract when it's all fresh. So it's super dry. Um, the, the wing web, it's basically a vein or like a tendon or something going right in front of the leading edge of the wing. And this one can be really tricky to inject it, but you will get it. I mean, it doesn't matter. You might have to inject it 20 times till you hit the right spot. Just keep doing it because you're not hurting anything. And um, as soon as you inject, you should be able to feel that it swells up like a blister. And once you see that, that's a good sign. It means that uh, you have put the water in the right spot. So it's basically uh, getting trapped underneath the skin and swelling up. And you can just let it sit aside after you're totally done. And uh, you will be shocked that uh, how, how fresh that skin is can be now you can see it is a stretchy again it's not kinking up even if a little bit part like a small part of that whole um, wing web uh, if it's kinking you should you should go for it you should keep uh, injecting it don't let that little piece that is dried out make you think that oh you know the most of it is all uh, is all um, uh, softened up let that piece of stay dry doesn't matter let's move on no I would go every part of the wing and every part of the wing web and uh, inject it thoroughly now we're doing the other wing I'm not sure if uh, if I have shown because I, I recorded this video a long way uh, a long time ago I'm not sure um, if there is any part that it, the camera captured that the swelling is happening when I'm injecting it but um, I know it, it you, you when you when you try it yourself you will definitely notice it yeah you can see that I'm trying to hit that spot in different areas because with a little bit of a injection you see the foamy or soapy water is seeping out it's going into the feathers it means that you're not you're not inside the skin so you just keep trying more and more it just uh, it's just the way it is the best thing to do is to prevent this from happening by mounting them quicker I have to do this kind of on every bird but not to this extent because everything can get dry now you can see the feathers are starting to move separately from one another but um, I don't think it's enough yet so we have to keep injecting it Yeah, a lot of people think that you know when they get a bird that's been sitting in the freezer for too long and it's been dried out it's got to be tossed 
or thrown away. Um, I wouldn't. I do this and I give it a shot. I bet you nine out of ten you can you can salvage the bird. You can see the wing whip is still kinking, so we got to keep injecting. So now, if if the bird has been freezer burned terribly to the point that it has lost its natural estate and you can never bring that moisture back into it. If it if it gets to that point, you will find out after injection, feathers will start to fall out. But I've had this happening maybe only twice in the in the last 15 years. Most of them are salvageable. Most of them. And there are other methods too that I have demonstrated in other video and uh, we will get to that one too. But today we are working on a perfectly mountable hawk that has been just sitting in the freezer for four or five years and uh, it's just dried out. Now injecting the head and face, actually it's a lot easier than what it sounds um, because the skin is quite easier to get underneath and inject it all around the eyelids, all around the beak, where we're going to cut and, uh, and skin skin out the whole skull out. So it's a lot easier, but we still have to do it. around the, the head and beak is very important. Um, you need to have very pliable and fresh skin around the skull to be able to skin it out properly. So keep injecting every little spot that seems to be a little bit dry for you. I'm giving it a little bit more stretch to see if everything sometimes the neck the whole neck needs to be injected and uh, I have uh, rehydrated birds that they were hopeless and they all worked out sorry guys my uh, headlight is actually helping me to see a lot better but apparently it creates a lot of uh, uh, problem for the camera and I uh, and I always notice that when the work is done it makes it quite a bit um, it creates a lot of contrast in the image and uh, it might it might make it a little bit difficult for you to see everything but uh, I explained everything that you know I'm just trying to push the water underneath the head skin all around the eyes, all over the head, and um, with a little bit of a towel, I keep the e extra moisture uh, off of the skin. It just makes it cleaner to, to work. And with the tip of spatula, sometimes it helps if I can move the skin around the nose or around the face. It tells me that the skin has been viable, and uh, yeah, you can see that whole beak opens up but it's a little bit stiff so it needs more injection okay guys this video coming to an end I am going to upload the next part which is skinning the same hawk after rehydration stay tuned we'll see you in the next part thanks for watching